Hey friends, in this video, I'll be showing you how I automate Meta Ads creative reports with AI using N8N. By the end of this video, I'll elaborate step by step, note by note on how to create this automation. Some prerequisites before we continue, you need to understand what is Looker Studio or how to create tables in Excel. This is how the workflow starts. It triggers from a Looker Studio dashboard with creative performance and the Looker Studio sends a scheduled report to your chosen email at 8 a.m. on Monday. So this dashboard triggers every Monday at 8 a.m. to your email. This is a sample dashboard that I'll build for all my clients when I'm running Facebook ads for them. If you aren't familiar with Local Studio, other alternatives would be to use Supermetrics or to pull the ads data directly from the Meta API. The most important thing about this dashboard is how it compares performance with its previous period. The date of this dashboard is 19 July to 25th July. It compares performance to its previous period, which is July 12th to 18th. Every line here represents one ad and you can see where the increase in cost per lead comes from and the decrease in cost per lead comes from. I believe in good decisions made weekly to drive long-term insights and I don't believe in like micro optimization of the ad accounts. Usually the SOP that I follow every week is on Monday, I'll go into the ad account, I'll receive a report like this and then make adjustments once a week only in terms of managing the lead performance and cost per lead. I don't like messaging people or an LLM to ask questions about creative performance because I want to see everything in a single view. I think the effort when it comes to even typing something on my keyboard to ask for something. Maybe I'm generally a lazy person, but I just want to see everything at once that helps me make a decision that's best for the Meta Ads account. This is where the workflow starts, where you have a Gmail trigger to listen for emails specifically from Looker Studio. You have to put the title of your dashboard here. Make sure you only filter for emails sent from Looker Studio, no reply at google.com. You'll then receive a binary file, after which I use this note to read the contents of the PDF file. You'll get some data like this. For demonstration purposes, I've replaced it with dummy data. After that, I have a company contact set note and this is where you put in information about the client you're running ads for. This is all dummy data over here but for the specific ad account you're running, I'll recommend you put at least a brief description of what the client is trying to achieve, their unique selling propositions, the product or service that they're pushing. I encourage you to put as much information as you can over here. I then have rules over here and this is where I think this is the golden prompt of this automation, right? So let me run through this with you. Analyze week on week ad performance and classify it into one of the defined scenarios based on volume of leads and cost per lead. Follow the structured format provided below. Start with a clear scenario statement based on performance chosen from the following. So these here are situations in which I would think are general directions of how performance could be like for a particular ad account. If total leads are increasing with stable CPL, I think that is still okay. If total volume of leads are increasing with decreasing CPL, which is cost per lead, I think it's still okay because if every week you're spending the same amount with decreasing cost per lead, it means that you will have more leads. If the total volume of leads is increasing with slightly increasing CPL plus 10 to 5% on a weekly basis, I think that is still okay because I do expect cost per leads to always increase if you spend more gradually every single week. These are all the scenarios that I've mapped out based on my experience when it comes to running meta ads. Another point to take note of this workflow is CPLs. The draft benchmark I've established for this account would be a cost per lead of $12. If the cost per lead exceeds, let's say $25 or even $36, this is not acceptable. This is generally a methodology I took from Alex Hamozzi, right? And if you aren't sure, Alex Hamozzi is like a super big entrepreneur. In his $100 leads book, if let's say your average cost per lead is $12 and a particular creative is driving cost per lead, which is like $25 or if not $30, that is where probably it doesn't make sense. But for leads performance in general, sometimes it's common where a particular creative can drive a lot of leads, but the quality of the leads is compromised. And that's where you shouldn't take everything at face value when it comes to leads because leads are leads. But if let's say you see the quality of leads declining from a particular ad creative, right? This is where you need to make sure to adjust something. So the downside of this workflow that I've analyzed is only at the absolute volume of leads. For every single ad account, the cost per lead benchmark is different. So feel free to adjust it. I then have a set note to just extract the data, which is fairly straightforward. I then have this note where it creates a chat input variable and just plonks in all the variables that are important for the LLM to analyze. The model I'm using is Gemini 2.5 Flash. And this highlighted here is the body of text that the LLM has spit out in terms of analyzing my weekly creative ad performance. I then have another chat input node and the main objective of this is just to format the text of the previous LLM into nice HTML CSS that will be sent to my email. I then feed this data source into this formatting LLM over here and the main objective of this is just to format it in a way that's nice to be read on a Gmail email. So this here is the output you see here 
here from the LLM that's nicely formatted. I have a code note that just removes a little bit of the variable over here, which makes it a little nicer on the Gmail email. And then I send an email to myself. This is a sample of how the email update would look like. It first starts off with a big picture of how the ad account is looking. The total volume of leads is decreasing with decreasing CPLs. If my total volume of leads is decreasing with decreasing CPL, I think it's still okay. From my experience, I'll then say this is more of a function of spends where I potentially need to increase spends as well. My leads decreased by 3.2%, which is honestly not much. I, my CPL decreased by 2.6%. My amount spent decreased by 5%, which is not much. But I wouldn't say that there's a lot of red flags with the account. If leads, let's say, decreased by 10% and my CPL increased by 20% or 50%, these are things I'll actually take note of. The first section of this email identifies the non-performing creatives where the CPL is above $12. This identifies, okay, this ad has a CPL of $22. It has only two leads, some actions and creative insights and some recommendations for the new ads. I know you can write Facebook ads rule for this, but I, I'm, I'm also more of a fan of understanding what's happening on your ad account because I don't like, let's say, rules to be fired and I don't have caught next or a record of why it's executed. This helps serve more as a documentation for me to understand at any point of time what is happening with the ad accounts because I never want to end up in a situation where the client asks me a question and I don't know what's happening on ad accounts. So these are all the non-performing creatives. If I really agree with the LLM, I will then manually probably go into the ads account and pause these ads. The next section of this report shows ads who have CPL below $12. This ad over here, he has spent $512. The CPL is $6.25 and it has 82 leads. Getting that huge volume of leads with a low CPL definitely indicates to me this is an ad that's really working. And of course, then I'll need to think how can I make use of this ad to scale and maybe even create iterations of this ad for me to scale the account even further. If you aren't sure, I also created another workflow that analyzes the ad itself and I'll link that video in the video description. You have created this with insufficient data and if there's not enough data, I definitely don't want to touch it because I want to allow Meta to give it more budgets in terms of learning how the ad performs at a higher scale. In full transparency, I would also rate this automation maybe only at about 6 out of 10 in terms of usefulness. Why? It's because I can actually infer from the dashboard itself how performance is thoroughly. And that's why I'm a super big fan of creating nice dashboards in terms of seeing everything you need to see in a single view. Because when I create a dashboard like this, I'm looking at leads, I'm looking at cost per lead, I'm looking at amount spends, and then I'm narrowing down on what specific variables are causing the overall cost per lead to increase. You can see a lot of cost per lead has increased week on week which might indicate to me that there might be some creative ad fatigue going on because if my spends have remained the same exactly week on week and my cost per lead is increasing maybe there might be some sort of variable that might be causing cost per lead to increase are the ads being shown to people who have seen my ads over and over again i need to go to the ads account to monitor reach and frequency and this is where i might potentially look at trends per creative in a very nice way so in a very direct sense this might not be super helpful if you're like super experienced but i do think that it's also worth getting like a written update because at the end of the day if i can receive an email and not take the proactiveness to even type anything to an llm or even go to the dashboard to see the results of it. if i can just receive it in my inbox and just analyze it very quickly that will make me a lot more efficient when it comes to analyzing and optimizing the ad accounts i'm responsible for some future considerations for this workflow i like to receive a slack notification of the recommendations that the llm have in a structured manner this is one of the slack automations i've built for one of my clients this workflow automatically triggers whenever someone comments on a facebook post of a particular page. So whenever someone comments on a Facebook post, I can see who commented it. The LLM would then create reply previews for it. So in this automation, the staff of the company can then choose, okay, do I want reply one, reply two, reply three, reply four, or reply five. So how I like to take this automation to a further extent, if I have this report over here and it clearly identifies that this is the best performing ad, I want to build an automation where it says increase spends for this particular ad. Then you put the justification why. Because the CPL is $6.25, it has registered 82 leads so far. Week on week performance look extremely good and that's the reason why we should increase spends by 10 to 20%. I would like to have this option over here. Or let's say just click option one and then the LLM would then go execute the optimization. This is definitely possible and something I'm thinking of building. Let's say when it comes to pausing of non-performing ads, let's imagine that this option one over here is to pause non-performing ads. So I'll just click option one and it will immediately go to the ads platform to pause the non-performing ads, which I think would save me a little bit of time as well. So these are things that I want to potentially build and improve this. I must say it is always good to have a human approve a particular step at any point of time because let's say when it comes to increasing budgets of the best performing ads, I'd like to earn a side of caution when giving LLMs the permission 
decisions to adjust budgets because budgets is like real money, right? You want to make sure that it executes it properly. And this is where I have the dilemma of, let's say, entrusting an LLM or entrusting a real staff to actually do it because you know when you instruct someone on your team to do it, right? There is that human accountability. Maybe pausing of non-performing ads, I would say these are things I'm willing to let the LLM execute. But maybe for increasing budgets of the best performing ad, these are things I might actually still prefer a human to do for now until I can guarantee and rigorously test that the system of increasing budgets is extremely reliable. Why? Because when it comes to running ads, the truth is the data you see over here is just at the ad level. There are many unknown variables that are specific to the ad account. What if the ad is in different campaigns? And what if the ad is in different ad sets? How do you really manage that? Right. So when it comes to that, you need a lot more data layers to work with. You need the campaign ID, you need the ad set ID. I know for meta ads, a lot of advertisers, let's say, have prospecting campaigns, retargeting campaigns. How does it look like? So this is just my general approach, right? Because in a fully transparent manner, I like to set up all my ads with the same naming convention. And sometimes they might actually appear across different campaigns. So this would definitely be an issue. But I think the pausing of non-performing ads should actually be okay. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.